Okay, guys, we're back on Marge. Uh, I want to just kind of talk about uh, some of the first things I do when I get into a project. Um, so with this car in particular, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be doing a straight axle, and there's a lot of different options out there for straight axles. But you, this technique can be used for rear ends, front ends, whatever you're doing. And it's really quite simple. So what I did is I basically took a plumb bob, and I uh, just basically hung this guy off of uh, some different key points on the car. One in particular being, one spot in particular being the uh, wheel well lip, you know, so I just basically t went to the inside lip uh, and dropped a plumb bob and I uh, made a mark on the floor. I don't know if you can see that, but believe it or not, that's my mark right there. And then I also took a plumb bob, that same plumb bob, and I dropped it from the, uh, I basically dropped it from the, uh, from the center of the ball joint. And I just utilized the grease zerk. And then I put that mark on the floor as well, which is right there. Bam. So the point to that was, is that, and I did it on both sides. And the whole reason behind that was to uh, just basically get an idea of the overall width. Because you want to get your, you want to make sure your wheels are set up properly. So I did the same thing in the back as well. Um, basically took a, uh, took the plumb bob and I dropped it from the uh, inner wheel wells. And then I also estimated the location. So basically you can see that the, it's tough. You can't drop a plumb bob from the axle flange. So what I did is I just kind of utilized the outside of the tire Put a straight edge across it, figured that out there, drew it out on the floor, and got my width. What what I figured out is that I think I need to have my, I think I need a rear axle that's 48 inches from flange to flange. I don't know if you can see up there, but there's actually quite a bit of space in these. Way more, more space in here than what I originally thought I was going to find. I'm kind of, um, so there's quite a bit of room in here for tire. So what I'm going to do is I know that I'm going to, I'm calculating a uh, axle or flange to, to flange on the rear end from backer plate mounting surface to backer plate mounting surface. This guy right here of 48 inches. That'll actually shrink the rear end up, uh, I believe an inch and a half on each side. That'll put, and then I'll, what I want to do is I want to have, I want to have a greater offset I want to have a positive offset so then that way the wheel looks like it's kind of sunk in. I just like the way that looks. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with this guy. And I think is what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to put a tire underneath this thing without modifying the inner. I might as I go along, because if I do it, if you see, you can see that this is the unibody frame rail. You can see here, I've got about an inch-ish or so. I could cut that, um, like on a Trans Am or a Firebird or Camaro from the 70s. What you can do is you can just take this guy and you can split it in half. And it looks to me, I could gain two inches of wheel well. But it's the question is, is what's the effect that that will have on the rear seats? because I do want to continue with a stock style interior. So anyways, I might end up just knocking out this lip. I might end up knocking out half of the frame rail and widening it. I don't know yet, but I think it's what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to attempt to fit a tire and wheel combination, see what I can come up with without modifying this. And then if I get the tire and wheel, you know, let's say if I get it ordered and it shows up and I find that I have to modify it, well, so be it. It's it's not the end of the world. I'm perfectly fine with it. I've done it to, I, I've, I've personally have done it to two F bodies already. So I've mini tub two of them. Uh, so no big deal for me uh, to just hack all that out. But what I want to make sure of is I want to make sure that when I cut this out, that I will not have any effect on the interior and such with the bigger tubs and things. And I, I don't think I will in this car. And I think if I did, if it did affect the seat, um, you know, with the seating, I don't think it's going to cause a, too much of a ruckus because the way that this car is set up, 
it's kind of already spaced out. And then I'll get the keys here and we'll take a look at the, in the trunk. Uh, I grabbed the keys. Ugh. All right. So we'll take a peek in the trunk here. And you can see it's very similar. I mean, if, if anybody has experience with like an F-body, it's very similar, but the wheel wheel doesn't, it doesn't push as far forward. So like I said, I, I, it'd be, it really isn't a big deal to cut that out. It's in really good shape. There's no reason to, if I don't need to, you know, this car's going to hook <laughs> with it being a straight axle in the front. Uh, this car should hook on dirt. So, because it puts all the weight on the rear end, puts all the weight on the rear tires. I should be able to hook up on any street. Traction isn't as important to me as, uh, traction isn't as important to me as drivability and stuff, you know? So for me, I want to, I guess I should take that back. Traction is important, but I also want the car to look the part. Like it's more important for me to have a car, this car at least in particular, to look like a gasser. And if you tub the whole dang thing out and put, uh, you know, uh, 30 inch tall, 12 inch wide slicks or something underneath it, it, it really isn't, it's losing the nostalgic look that I'm going for. So I, and I, if I put like a nine inch wide slick on the back, trust me, the car's gonna hook. It's gonna hook just fine. And I think it's still gonna look pretty sweet. So uh, that's what we're up to again. So I, I first thing we did, is uh just a recap plumb bobbed rear end estimated 48 inches plumb bobbed the front and we measured it out let me just get a tape measure here i'll just double check it um tape measure so i got the block set up from the center point that block of wood right there is on the line for the center point of the ball joint, the lower ball joint, and it's at 49 inches. So 49 inches from center ball joint to center ball joint. So, um, and then the outer, let's check that real quick. Let's check that real quick. Because the front, you can buy these, uh, straight axle kits and they come in a different couple of different sizes so i'm on the i'm on the lip now so we're going from inner lip to inner lip now grab my tape measure here and so inner lip to inner lip is like 67 and a quarter ish so i know that you know once you calculate in so i think the measurements on the straight axles are kingpin to kingpin basically the same locations like similar to a ball joint so kingpin to kingpin they come in a few different sizes so you calculate kingpin plus spindle plus tire and then that's how it all ends up i believe is what you got i gotta do i gotta do some more research on it but you know, if you look at the car, if we look at the car, I jack the car up and this tire, the way that the suspension is, the geometry is fairly good. The tire did not move much at all. So it's quite a ways in and I think I want it to be wider. So um, I, what I don't want is I don't want the front stance to be wider than the back stance. Cause that just, I don't know. I just don't think that looks good. I don't know, but it might end up that way. But I, I, I've this car, it's tiny. The car is tiny. It's hard to imagine that this car is really the same size in length as this car. It is within a couple of inches. I haven't actually measured them. I just parked them next to each other. That's an 89 Chrysler Conquest, 1962 Olds Cutlass. And the, the car looks giant, but it's tiny. The car is tiny. 
So, but it amazes me because it has a lot more room on the wheel wells for slicks. I don't think I'm going to have to do much there to get them to fit. And I got a lot of room up here to make this car stance, the stance wise, to look really good as a gasser. So anyways, that's what I'm up to today. Um, next steps is going to be to get the engine pulled, transmission pulled out, interior going to get pulled out, um, and then I'm going to start setting up a rear end housing, a four nine inch rear end housing for the back. Got to figure out the suspension, what I'm going to do there. And uh, got to get the uh, firewall cut because there ain't no way that a four speed manual is going to fit in that setup right now. Then I need to start considering what I'm going to do for my frame rails in the front. I have a plan, but I need to kind of take a look at everything before we, before we move forward with my plan, and we'll talk more about that. And last but not least, I need to set up a clutch pedal, and I'm just going to do a full blown mechanical clutch pedal, old school. It's, I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to make the whole deal. So, anyways, uh, making some progress on March. Stuff is happening. Preparations for the build, and I just wanted to kind of talk about some of the first steps I take when I'm uh, starting a new project like this. So. Um, before I get torn into it, also, it's going to be very imperative that uh, I get the car leveled out. Get the car leveled out, and I need to consider, if I start cutting too much, I need to start putting in some, some reinforcement. Um, I learned a valuable lesson with that. I was working on a 79 Camaro, and I redid the, the rear frame rails were rotted out of it. And I put the uh, competition engineering um, subframe kit in it. And I just cutting out the cutting out the wheel tubs and everything, leaving most of the structure in, but cutting out the frame rails that were already rotten and stuff, and cutting out those things, um, the frame rails and the floor supports and all that. The car moved; it moved, and uh, I had some gap issues that I had to recover from. So the cars will move on you. So be aware of that if you're new at this and this is your first time. If you start cutting out those main supports, or if your car like currently. Unibody car, right? Currently, these doors on the ground fit and close fantastic. But right now, I got the jack stand and rear axles. Have the jack stands on the front subframe. The weight of the engine's kind of pushing down on this. And look at the door gap. The door does not close. So you got to be aware of that. So if right now, the stress of that jack stand is tweaking this whole unibody enough to make that door not close. If you weld in subframe connectors right now, you will maintain that gap and you're in trouble. So when I have this car, when I, what I'll probably end up doing is I'm going to have it set up in a way to where it's not stressing the uh, subframe. So I'll get it tied, the jack stands or something up in this area. This whole front suspension and everything will end up coming out. But I think is what I'll do is I'll get the wheel supported first, wheel supported there, do my frame ties first, like the first steps, get the weight of the, of the car on the tires. I know the gaps will be good there because when the car is parked outside, the gaps are great. So I might end up doing, like one of the first things I might end up doing is putting frame rails in or doing frame ties. So... Just to give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about with the door gaps and such. So the variance is now is I have the front jack stands out. Rear, car, rear end is still up on the jack stands. I couldn't even shut the door with it up. I opened the door, but I couldn't shut it. And I didn't want to. But you can see. No problem. And we've got a, we've got a fairly good gap back. So just that difference. Guys, I want to just say thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button. Um, if you guys have any great ideas on what I should be doing with Marge, please add those in on the comment section, and uh, we will do our best to read every single one of them and respond. But if you got any great ideas, um, please share them, because I don't know everything. I've never worked on a 62 Olds Cutlass. Um, so I don't know all the... All those little details that some of you guys may already have experiences with or or maybe you worked on something similar and and you have like a, a, a trade secret or or something that would help me along the way uh keep in mind the car is going to be a four speed i'm spending the money on a four speed uh and then we're going to go with a small block chevy so uh the motor is actually sitting right here that's going to go in there and uh, uh that's going to be we're going to go through and rebuild that guy 
And then I've got to find a bell housing and I still got to find a four speed. So I'm looking on Facebook Marketplace every day for the right deal. So uh, again, hey, thanks a lot. Like, subscribe. We'll see you guys soon.